D'Amico from the uh, University of York, uh, working with our good friend Tim Spiller. Um, he's going to talk about uh, spin chain for robust entanglement generation and storage. Thank you. Thank you, John, for the presentation, for the introduction, and thank you to the organizer for inviting me here. Thank you to you all for being still here, uh, as uh, John said, it's the last session. So, uh, this work, uh, um, I will be talking about uh, uh, spin chain for boost entanglement generation, storage if I will have time. Um, the work has been done in collaboration with Kieran Wilkinson, with uh, Marta Esther Elias, and with Tim Spiller. The two main authors, I would say, are Kieran and Marta. This is the work of Kieran uh, and his uh, um, project uh, and part of the work uh, of PhD of, uh, of Marta. So first thing first, um, let me just uh, give a very brief introduction on spin chain. By now there is uh, a big uh, body of work uh, on uh, spin chains for uh, uh, quantum information processing. Uh, what I mean by spin chain uh, is really any physical system with components which can be mapped into spin one half particles and that uh, um, where the spin one half particle interact with their neighbor, neighbors, next nearest neighbors, depending on the design. And depending uh, on the type of spin chain chosen, uh, it's a uh, different spin chain has been proposed for transferring quantum information entanglement, in particular for perfect space state transfer, um, perform quantum gates, uh, generate entanglement, uh, also distribute it. Uh, but usually each spin chain has uh, uh, its own uh, um, speciality, let's say each design of couplings, uh, each uh, um, um, modulation of coupling and uh, uh, how many couplings has to be addressed and so on and so forth. So uh, what I'd like to address uh, in this talk is uh, if we can come up with a single device, which is not too complicated, which could generate uh, two types uh, of entanglement. Uh, which is quite type of entanglement which are quite important, so cluster states uh, or bell states, which may be able also uh, to store these uh, entangled states after generating them, or in case distribute them. Um, we want something robust, um, for example against fabrication noise, and uh, possibly relatively easy to engineer. And uh, why not? Of course, so fast uh, with respect to the typical decoherence of the hardware. And that also possibly we can implement uh, uh, as idea with different type of hardware. So we're asking for a lot here. And uh, this is my outline. I will try to introduce, first of all, uh, uh, the system I will be discussing, the entangling protocols that can be done in the system, how we can optimize them, I will discuss the robustness and the speed. I will discuss the storage protocol if I will have time, and then briefly discuss uh, hardware and the coherence. <coughs> to introduce the type of uh, chain I am interested in, I will uh, do a step back and talk uh, about uh, the Sushrifer and Eiger chain, SSH. So uh, as, as early as uh, in the late 70s, uh, they studied the, the instability of polyacetylene molecules um, in which due to uh, electron um, phonon interaction the system uh, has a dimerization and uh, there, are, there is the appearance of two degenerate ground states which per se <coughs> create, uh, this is a general thing, we have it also in magnetic system, usually it creates the formation of domains. So here, for example, you have one of the domains here you have uh, with this type of ground state, you have, you have the other domain with this other type of ground state. And as a result, we have the interface between the domains in which we have lattice defect. And in this type of uh, chain, we have that uh, in this lattice defect, we have the formation of topological solitons. So we have basically a, um, a way of uh, uh, creating uh, basically this type of, uh, of uh, 
uh, localization by using lattice defects. So the type of chain I will be discussing is uh, a chain inspired by the SSH uh, spin chain. So it's a dimerized spin chain. This is not the first work done on this type of chains. There is other work uh, in, the, um, in the literature. So again, uh, this type of chain is characterized by two types of uh, um, coupling strong coupling with coupling, dimerization, and as you see we have that uh, when uh, the two types of ground state meet we have a topological defect. In this case it's a weakly coupled defect and it's the type of defect we'd be interested in uh, in uh, this talk. And this is uh, the type of chain that I will be interested in and will be discussing. So it's a very simple one, it's uh, uh, a seven uh, element uh, um, SSH type of spin chain, we call it ABC because we have uh, three defects, A, B and C, you see, where we can imagine of having three different special sites with solitons where we can imagine to have localization. So this is the system I will be dealing with and we have uh, only two types of coupling, one is big delta, the strong coupling, and one is small delta, the weak coupling. The Hamiltonian of this type of chain is uh, an XY type of Hamiltonian. So uh, the first uh, term here are, uh, um, first of all, our encoding is spin up one, spin down zero, vice versa, whatever you prefer. But I mean, uh, um, we have this type of encoding. And we have maximum one excitation per site. Then <coughs> the first term here uh, uh, corresponds to on site energies. And uh, uh, except uh, when I will be discussing noise, uh, I will actually consider the energies, the on-site energy to be site independent. So basically, this is just uh, um, in the perfect chain, it's just an additional constant and will not be important for uh, the um, dynamic. And then we have an open term between nearest neighbors uh, with uh, uh, the value of uh, uh, the open parameter uh, either big delta strong coupling or small delta weak coupling. We have uncovered three different types of entangling protocols in this type of chain. This is why we find it so interesting. And uh, um, importantly, the entanglement occurred to the natural evolution of the Hamiltonian I have just uh, shown. And the type of resulting entanglement uh, clearly depends on the initial state because we are talking about natural evolution, so natural dynamic. So in particular, when I inject and uh, um, in how many sites I inject. And the type of uh, uh, entanglement that can be produced is the one that we refer to as cluster state, so this type of circuit, all bell state, this type of circuit here. So, let me introduce the three types of entanglement. This is my chain. In the case, uh, okay. Uh, in the, for the first type of protocol, uh, we are injecting uh, in contemporary in, a state, in a, the site A and B, and we are injecting a plus state in each of them. Then we wait a certain time, Tm, and then we can collect again in A and C a cluster type of state. So the result of this uh, um, gate here. This is uh, um, the same type of gate that um, uh, Peter Knight was discussing, is the fact that we have uh, basically two um, fermions that are passing by each other. So basically I have a phase shift in one of the components of, the, of uh, the product of, of these two states. And TM is my, is for this chain will be the mirror in time and is the entangling time. For the, uh, for the second type of protocol, <coughs> we inject again uh, in uh, say sites A and C and we inject one excitation in each of them. This time we, are, we wait only half of this time, Tm over 2. 
and then we can collect so we, we can collect again in A and C the result of this gate operation here, so a bell state, this bell state here. For the third type of protocol, we need to inject only one site in the middle. We just need one excitation. We wait again just T m over 2, so half of the first of the time for the uh, first protocol. And we obtain the same uh, um, type of, uh, uh, of gate. We perform the same type of entangling gate as we had for the previous one. Tm, the time that we need for this entanglement, can be estimated analytically to a very good approximation. So let me, uh, intro after introducing these three different type of protocols that we have uh, uh, discovered for this chain and the type of uh, injection and entanglement that they produce, let me show you a few simulations. So, First of all, uh, I'm going to show you the uh, case uh, of, uh, in which we inject uh, two um, class states, so the, the case in which you get a cluster state uh, as an output, and uh, I'm showing you the entanglement of formation and the fidelity of the initial state. So first of all, the red one is the fidelity, and as you can see, this type of chain also allows for quasi-perfect state transfer, so the operation repeats itself. You, if you don't pick up the entanglement at the first cycle, you can still uh, collect it afterwards. We have the maximum entanglement of formation and half time between the revivals of the fidelity. And uh, um, the time, the, the, the dynamic of uh, uh, this uh, ABC type of chain is uh, um, for this coupling here, where we have uh, a small delta that is uh, uh, divided by the delta uh, equal to 0 0.1, is well approximated by an effective ABC trimer. And this is the, um, I don't know if you see it, is the dotted line that here is the envelope of the uh, entanglement of formation. So that is what you obtain if you, consi if you consider the uh, entanglement uh, of formation you get from uh, an effective trimer suitable to reproduce uh, uh, this chain. And in this way, it's also possible to estimate to a very good accuracy the time in which we can obtain the um, maximum uh, um, entanglement. And uh, similarly for the other two protocols, so the ones in which we produce bell state, either with uh, a, a contemporary injection of two excitation or with a single excitation in the middle, again, uh, we obtain a similar type of uh, dynamics. We obtain uh, a uh, revival of the initial state, a quasi-periodic revival of the initial state. And we obtain the, the entanglement of formation peaks to one in between, but this time at uh, an entanglement time that is half for the same chain is half of this one. So all of this is good. Uh, what we would like to know is, uh, uh, this is nice, uh, for example if I look here at the time, I can see that the time at which I have entanglement of formation picking to one for the first cycle is about 200 times big delta, which is could be quite a lot, considering the big delta is a strong, strong coupling. So can we optimize, actually, the protocol? Well, this is, again, the entanglement of formation and uh, for the three protocols. So cluster states uh, is uh, black, uh, and the two bell state protocols uh, is blue and red. And this is done uh, with respect to the ratio between uh, small delta and big delta. Notice that the minimum here is 0 0.4 and not 1. And here we are arriving to a ratio that is uh, greater than 0.5. So TE is the type uh, at the time of entanglement, of maximum entanglement. And the thing that we see here is that uh, it is strongly dependent, it is exponentially dependent uh, on uh, uh, the increase uh, of uh, uh, small delta over big delta of this ratio. And uh, uh, more importantly, we can also see that uh, you see high entanglement of formation. Here we are all above 0.9. 
can be achieved also for uh, ratio that are actually pretty high. This uh, um, arrows correspond more or less to these arrows here. You see that dramatically reduce the time for the entanglement of formation. And uh, so we see that if we increase uh, uh, our uh, um, ratio between the two coupling and uh, to a time uh, of entanglement, which is uh, much more realistic, we still have that all protocols can be achieved fast and reliably because we still have a very high value for the entanglement of formation. So, let me show you again the simulation for these cases in which uh, the, um, the ratio is uh, actually larger. I will just show you the simulation for uh, a, uh, the single site injection protocol, the third one. And I will consider the simulation for these three different ratios. The first we've already seen is our reference. Then I'm, get, I'm getting down here. And then I'm getting uh, as far as basically delta over big delta of the order of 0.4. And this is the result. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, actually basically 0.4. And what you notice, first of all, is that the similarity, of course, with an effective trimer uh, is starting to decrease a lot because uh, um, now we have um, many more states uh, coming into play. Still, however, we can uh, um, estimate using an effective trimer very accurately the time at which the entanglement of formation peaks, that's the only thing that you can really estimate very well using your uh, um, effective trimer at this point for this type of ratio, which is nice because we have an idea about that. But what is nice is also that uh, even for ratios as big as this, we still have our quasi-periodic dynamic and we still have uh, an entanglement that is uh, very, very, an entanglement of formation which is very, very close to one. So, so far so good, we can uh, optimize, uh, and again it's the same for the other two um, protocols, we can optimize the speed of our entanglement uh, uh, of formation, our gate, to get something really much more realistic than before as time um, for the entanglement. The other question we want to answer is, uh, is this entanglement that you obtain robust? So we will, first of all, uh, study, uh, what we study are the type of fabrication defect, or if you like, slowly varying type of noise. And what we have done, we have considered random variation of uh, the on-site energies, also called diagonal disorder, is the one that then would give rise to Anderson localization and random variation of the coupling, so what we will refer to as non-diagonal disorder. And I will directly show you the results for the same uh, um, case as before. And uh, what is really, really nice is that actually as the ratio here between small delta and big delta increases, so I get more realistic, my robustness also increases. And this is the same for all of the three protocols. So this is really, really neat. And please note that here we are really blasting the system. This is disorder fraction of uh, small delta, and here I have 50%. So I'm really talking about a lot of disorder. This is the line where I would have 10% error on small delta as a um, um, width of my distribution. And you see that basically I have uh, no effect on the entanglement. EOF at 10% error. So this is really nice. For the diagonal disorder, again, I have the same trend. As I go to more realistic small delta than big delta, the effect of disorder decreases dramatically. This is really nice. Again, um, here we arrive up to 50% disorder, so lots of disorder. And this is our 10% uh, uh, error threshold. So again, I can say that up to 10% error, not much happened uh, to my entanglement. I mean, it's really, really robust. Another thing that we can wonder is uh, if the system is robust against the asynchronicity of injection. I told you that we have two protocols in which we have to inject at two different sites, okay? So what happens if I 
inject first in A and then in C, so I don't do the injection in a, synchron in a synchronized way. This is my entanglement of formation, and again, I'm going down only up to nine, uh, 0 0.9, not all the way to 0, while the, um, the delay is going down up to 10% of my entangling time, so this is quite a bit. And what you see is that both for cluster state formation and bell state formation, at most, the entanglement of formation decreases to up to 0.92%. So again, we find it very robust. So uh, how am I doing with time? Right, so I will, I will then skip uh, uh, the storage protocol. I only say that in order to do storage, I have to add uh, a, a dimer and a chain. But this uh, chain now is slightly longer, but can do everything that I've already shown. And I will just men mention that uh, when we talk about the coherence and we consider platform for uh, um, different ways of implementing my, uh, my, my chain, characteristic energies against the entangling time, we find that in general within the entangling time, uh, sorry, that in general the entangling time for the different type of platform compare very well with the coherence time. So this is not the best way scenario, by the way, but uh, this is really nice. Which brings me to the end, uh, to my conclusions. So these are the questions I was asking at the beginning. And I hope I've shown that this type of ABC chain can be used as a multifunctional device to easily generate cluster states by using the, uh, and bell states by using its natural dynamic. Actually, I can generate using the sequence of protocols two and three two bell pair in sequence using just single injection. I haven't shown this. Um, I can store both type of entangled state. Uh, I have not discussed how this uh, uh, can be done. As I show, can be optimized for speed. It is robust against fabrication defect. I show you the graph. The graph, and interestingly, it become more robust as the speed increases of the gate increases, and the system is less like a trimer, if you like and uh, becomes also more realistic. And it's really robust in really big, big uh, uh, errors. It's relatively easy to engineer, I would claim, because we have only, it's a dimerized chain. If I think about molecules, this could be built with this type of specification. And I only need seven qubits uh, if I don't care about the storage, 11 if I care about the storage can in principle be constructed by uh, using very different hardware. For example, I love quantum dots, so electrons or excitons in quantum dot molecules, built by spec. Waveguides, they have done, uh, this, they have done uh, implementation of this type of SSH chain, and so the, um, the PST using waveguides. In general, anything in which I have qubit coupled by tunneling type or dipole dipole type of interaction, I mean, you, you, you claim your, your preferred type of hardware. It's very fast with respect to the coherence time, so it's, I think, feasible, as I've shown, for very type, different type of hardware. And there is some potential for scalability, because I could actually add at least another couple of dimers in the middle before uh, I really get into trouble. You cannot scale it to very, very long chain because then you would lose the um, superposition between your states uh, at the ends. But I mean, it is, uh, there is some potential for scalability. And uh, well, these are the papers uh, in which uh, uh, we have published, this is the work done in the last year, year and a half, so the papers in which uh, uh, we have done this work. And uh, so I close it here. Thank you very much for your attention. I, have a, I, I had a question about the, the nit nitrogen vacancy system, mm -hmm. where um, there you have a you have an electron spin and it's coupled to nuclear spins. Is it the same sort of principle uh, there that the if you just have one nuclear spin on the electron spin, you immediately get entanglement simply by dipole dipole interaction between the two um, well this if you just have to spin I would not consider that uh, uh, as, a, as a spin chain uh, 
you make that entanglement. I mean, if you have interaction between the two spins, yeah. But you could build uh, this type of speech chamber having this system repeated, I suppose. Yeah. Well, there can be up to 20. Well, then, then probably you could. Close, uh, close by, but they're not in a chain. They're just all. Oh, then the, uh, when I talk about chain, I don't really mean a linear chain. Uh, I don't care how they are. It's really the cup in the fact that you can write it as that type of Hamiltonian. Yeah. That what is happening. I mean, what is important. We call them chain, but they could be. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, any further questions for, for, for Irene? I know it. I know it's the end of the day, but we should uh, push. So, for the type of, uh, I guess, it's quantum dots. Do you mean um, the um, um, gate control quantum dots, where you might have quantum dots next to each other? I was really thinking more about self-assembled quantum dots. That's more what I have in mind. I mean, I, this is. Uh, Exiton exiton interaction between okay. exitons in different quantum dots is exactly that type of Hamiltonian. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, if there are no further questions, we'll move on to the next speaker and thank Irene again.